Um, I'll talk a bit about um, what we do. So we distribute, manufacture, and assembly various water and energy related products under our very own brand, which we call Daily. Uh, so other brands that we deal with, we source uh, high quality products from various global organizations, and these are some of the brands, uh, uh, global organizations that we work with. Our segments, as I mentioned earlier, we have seven different product segments and our water and energy. We have the water pump, local equipment, pools, water treatment, solar, generators, irrigation, and irrigation, which is our latest segment. So on our water pump, we have a very wide selection of pumps, from uh, surface pumps, booster pumps, global pumps, drainage pumps, and even the engine-driven pumps. So we have over 400 models, and we are very own brand. And our bogles, we have a wide selection of bogle um, pumps and well pumps that can be operated by solar, electric, and generator. On, on top of that, we also have a competitive range of accessories for this for the installation of these, and we also offer as expert installation and service. Now, important to note, we do not drill bogles. So many people normally come to us asking us to. Maybe give a position for drill. We do not drill, but we work very closely with the drillers and recommend you some drillers and we come in to install the equipment and services as well. Um, and the generator engines and motors. Actually, this segment is now called general machinery because we have expanded from just generator engines and motors. We also do things like load boards, trimmers, and others have been planning to even expand to other uh, machinery equipment. So for generators, we have for small and large scale applications, we have petrol and diesel options, manual and automatic operation, we also have synchronized units, and we have also the silent and hand of set and open sets as well. We have quite a wide range. And the solar equipment, we have also a very comprehensive range of renewable energy products, from solar water heating to solar lighting to solar pumping and power pump up solution. So we have Solution for both residential and commercial use, and also we offer grid side and off grid solution. Under swimming pool equipment, we will do um, the plant room equipment, the pumps, the filters, the pool shell equipment, the lights, the heating, the accessories, and we also have fountain equipment as well. As well as the uh, pool care equipment, those are the chemicals and the, and the um, accessories that you use for maintenance of the swimming pool. And the water treatment we also have a wide selection of solutions from reverse osmosis units, filtration units, and we also have both for domestic and industrial applications. And our last segment of education, um, I, I call it the, the latest period of the block, so it's not so different for serious. So we offer various systems for both um, crop irrigation and landscaping. We have a wide range of accessories and controllers, and we also able to offer you expert advice. On top of that, we have a manufacturing uh, segment where we do manufacturing and assembly of some of our products and we offer shorter lead time and high quality products. We are also involved in various projects um, across the group and the aim is to improve people's lives. The solar house and the pump house that help us to size, we make our work easier, and the pool tool as well. We also have um, a go up for staff, we're able to access our products, we're able to log in our visits, do positions on it. We have the issue for our customers, we're not able to visit a branch um, physically, we're able to just log in online and purchase products uh, from Davis and Shasta. We also have the flow up, the flow up can be used by both staff and customers, where you're able to access. Um, the range of products through the extranet. You're able to access the sizing tools, the pump tools. You're able to access our various uh, locations and contacts for our various branches. And um, also we have the product manual on it, so you're able to see the wide range of products that we have. <coughs> now, 
Now, now people, as I said, we have over 1,000 highly trained, skilled, and professional staff, most of whom are engineers, spread over the 70 over 70 branches. I think right now we should be even close to about 100 branches over the 11 countries to ensure that we offer you quality products and services. And last but not least, we also like to give back to the community through our Improving Lives program, which is the CSR part. So we identify um, communities or organizations or areas where there's need and we're able to give back. So um, I think that is it. There is my shanti. Karibuni sana. Be at home. Is your neighbor as well, with your friend, thank you. Put a caption, a caption thing. So you can put a hashtag, women in STEM, STEM leadership, diversity in STEM, inclusion in STEM, the hashtag, yeah? The hashtag. And then let us start with the engineer. I think that we could work with the scientists. I'm just being reminded that on Twitter, B is B double E. Yeah. Engineer. B yes, the the so new key. Yes, B the engineer. So you follow that. So kindly tag them. Tag David and Shakir and also the millennial environmental. TME at TME. Yeah, TME Thank <laughs> you. 
To this day, she never tell you about her. She is under 30. She looked like she's under 30. But it's somewhere where she had 18 years of experience. Well, Dr. Amakode brings forth leadership and extensive experience in health systems, strengthening and resilience. She's a health advocate and she has been to health policy communication. She has done stakeholder management, partnership development, and health programming. And she has more than 18 years, 18 years of proven experience working with nonprofits, the private sector, medical association, and serving as board member and also board director. She has been a vice chair and co chair of several organizations in the health sector. Please help me welcome. My dear elegant ladies, Dr. Amakobe Wale. Thank you so much. So good morning. Um, I think uh, I have the pleasure of being in the company of engineers. 18 years ago, engineers who are not this many, number one, female engineers. But also not well dressed. You know, our image of engineers is overall, uh, very badly done hair. 
same way your image of doctors was pretty much about big uh, stomach, old short man, yeah? So I think it's good to see that the image of STEM is changing a lot. And uh, it's encouraging that uh, you're, you're giving back. You're giving back to, to more young girls as they aspire to be engineers. So I just wanted to understand the space of engineering. I know there's mechanical, civil, electrical, chemical, Biosystems, oh, that's a new one. Agriculture, biomedical, oh, biomedical, is that supposed to go? Petroleum, oh my goodness, how many? I don't know. Like, which other can I catch up? Electronic, chemical. Okay, so let's say about 20, 15 or so, this is the same. Okay, have you all represented here? Is there a space that has less than others? Like which one? Mechanical. Oh, okay. Okay. I just needed to understand the space of engineering. And um, I think when Brenda reached out, I thought she would give me a topic like, you know, something to inspire you guys to go to the town sector or uh, <laughs> to parenting or, you know, the other things that I write about. Uh, but she told me about entrepreneurship. And for me, entrepreneurship has been quite the journey. So you heard that I, I am a sector. Actually, I'm fully employed uh, by a UK-based organization in the consulting space. But I think in the heart of my heart, I've always done, I've always been a hustler. I know hustler is, gives a very different connotation nowadays. But I think I've always wanted to do something. I think I've always been busy. And um, from the campus days, I went to campus, University of Nairobi, 96 to 2002. I remember joining the university and um, we just...
looking for doctors to fill that first minute of the study. And for each questionnaire that was filled, I used to earn 100 shillings. 100 shillings was a lot of money in those days. But the patience and the grit that it required, because you know, doctors being busy, you have to wait. Sometimes they've forgotten, because it's a hard copy questionnaire. But I did that job for the rest of my three years in campus until sixth year. And that opportunity got me to socialize a lot, to network a lot. I built my social capital as a medical student right from the university. And simply because I became vulnerable and went and asked a lecturer, I said, look, I need a different job. So I think I had someone, when you're doing introduction, someone asked him, you know, identifying a Davis attractive employee and saying, I'm a student, I need an attachment. And I think she got it. She was told how to do it at least, right? I hope she'll get it. So sometimes it takes that courage to simply be vulnerable and stand up. And so in campus, I was the type of student who had a, I had a TV, I had a small, I had software. And I'm telling you, man, there's no harm in, there's, there's nothing wrong with wanting software. Yeah? Work hard for it. If you want uh, a different kind of lifestyle, you have to work hard for it. So in university, because of that kind of uh, patience and grit and whatnot, I managed to you know, live the life that I wanted to, with money that was mine. So I think from a young age, I learned to one, live within my means, but two, to live within my money. I mean, to have my own money. So that really shaped how I viewed money later on. So in terms of uh, this title, my entrepreneurship journey, is not based on medicine. It's actually based on my other passions. And sometimes I say it's good that these career jobs are happening because we didn't have it as much. In our time, I went to a school in Kikuyu, you know that realize that I can do much more than what the career is offering me. Even within the career I think you had that um, the, the I sit on several boards, I co-chair, you know, stuff. And for me, it's about how do I give back to the community. So you can turn your passion or your other things in life that you enjoy doing, or within also your engineering space, into entrepreneurship. So that's that's the kind of uh, that's the title of the present of the outline of the presentation. So we we'll just go through what are the personality traits of an entrepreneur. What does it take, for, especially for a woman? The this is get towards women. Things to remember, the challenges of the ecosystem, and whatnot. So I, I I found this slide interesting because I don't know whether it is real. Can you tell me? If it's true, but sometimes I find it hard to be boxed into a, a space. And I think that's how people have dictated women should be. You know, at this age, 18 years, you're in school, go to university or college, finish, get a good job, then get a good man, get married, have children, and then after having children, society doesn't know what to do. And I'm telling you, it's 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 a quagmire. The 30s to 40s, if you've checked all those boxes, you realize society doesn't know what you should be doing with yourself. And I think at a young age, I see most of you are very young, it's important to define your life outside of society. Because society will tell you this, 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 and then you reach a point where you don't have those instructions anymore, and you get to be in a very confused space. And that's a time when, if you did things that people do in teenagehood in the and in the 20s, that's the time when you start doing them, and sometimes they come with you know, consequences. So, with women, uh, one of the traits that we have is that we have tolerance for risk and imperfection. In terms of, we are willing to go the extra mile. We, are, we, we have a bit of a stretch in us. And many of you, if your parents, you treat, that, that, that characteristic is really tested in that time. 
So that tolerance and uh, for risk and imperfection allows us to be very good entrepreneurs if we fix our mind to it. I'll give an example. So I gave, I started, I love traveling a lot. So I started this group on Facebook called Wonderland like Diaries. And it just stemmed from my, my love for writing and my love for traveling. So when I travel, I write about it. And I go into following from just people who are interested in where I go, what I do, because I, I like to break down travel into, to break down the things that travel is expensive. But another thing that I love is I love art. And that's why I say perhaps I may not have chosen medicine if I had better career guidance. But I love art, African art, I love promoting things that are authentic and real. And so I started this uh, Airbnb called Coven Cottage. So Coven is also the UB. So Coven is from Amakove. And Cottage is A O T H E. And I have this site that I had. I had some money somewhere, I plowed into it. A lot of money, actually, it was my pension that I went and uh, got it from uh, one of my employers. And it was, you know, with this image of people who want to come to a, a, a space where it's, it's calm, there are trees, the ambience was very good. In my opinion, the ambience was very good. There were people birds, and I did, you know, I did. I try to use local artisans because those are the sustainability conversations. Using local artisans, uh, no single use plastic for there, and um, basically a lot about sustainability. Then I put a price to it. And just during the times of COVID, and I got people coming because guys were looking for spaces to fight. But now the Kenyan mentality, at least the Nairobi mentality, is uh, Airbnbs were there for parties. And the location that I chose was a suburban location where you know we don't talk about parties here. We are all quiet, minding our own business, um, looking after ourselves. So long and short of it, after one and a half years, I could not sustain the business. Because once COVID opened up, you know, for time, as we're saying now, you know, people are afraid to travel, they're afraid to mingle. And so I had to shut down. And shutting down for me was painful. It was not about the money. But it was just that disconnection from my baby, you know, it was my, because I put my everything into it, in terms of my creativity, uh, my marketing, my whatnot. And it would have been very easy for me to say, you know what, I'm down. I don't want again to deal with this thing. Um, you know, Kenyans don't appreciate art and whatnot. But I told myself, okay, what else do I have? Um, so I gathered my things, gave notice to the landlord, gathered my things, went and built a mabati structure somewhere in another farm, and went and stored them. Remember, these are very expensive things in yeah, that cottage. And I told myself, I'm going to open for the cottage again. And right now, as we speak, uh, for those who follow me, I am actually transforming uh, an aeroplane, a jump aeroplane, as we were told, into another cottage. Yeah. So it also took a lot of risk because, again, this is a risk that you're going to come and patronage that thing. But I think as women, we have that extra capability of, of pushing ourselves another step further. Of course, you have to do it with a lot of planning, not just jump into it. But I think one of these characteristics is very important for entrepreneurship. They say over 50% of businesses fail within the first five years. So it's important, when you fail, you fail forward. So failing will happen, but fail forward. Durability, in terms of just the grit. And I think by the time you're studying things like engineering, you have that capability of, you know, doing a lot of it, some of it may be manual, I don't know how your course is structured, but then a lot of it is also a man's world. And it's not going to be easy, yeah? We've sat, at least now medicine, we've now turned over. We have more female doctors than male doctors graduating from our university. But in our time, we were like 18 out of our 120. Yeah? And, and so sitting in some of these spaces, sitting in boards, you know, you'll be told, you know what, you're the one to pray, you're the one to serve tea, you're the one to take notes. That is how much we are reduced in terms of women. So you have to be durable. Sometimes you have to speak up and stand up for yourself. Uh, we have a mindset, a mindset of 
how do I, especially if you have uh, dependents, you have a mindset of, I need to make a little bit more. And I think that mindset of nurturing, the mindset of caring, the mindset of um, looking at the future, so it's not just about the here and now, gives us a very good opportunity to plow that into an entrepreneurship, entrepreneurship because you need that. But you do need to have things that you need to remember. When you, if you want to jump into that, if you already in it, these are some things that maybe you may have experienced and we will share more about it. You need to have a vision. So when you start your journey, like I have another business, I have like three businesses. I don't care, you want this one. Okay, the ones that I have, uh, I have declared are three. So one is a domestic worker in your city from your right. And you know, some of the, my businesses come again from my lifestyle. Like I see a I see a problem. Maybe I've got experienced the problem, and then I realize what you can get a solution to it. And my type of personality is a type that I have to tell myself to stop. Because I can see problems everywhere and I can see solutions everywhere. The problem with me is that I need someone to execute those solutions. And so many of the times I'll start with very fantastic ideas, very fantastic solutions, and then many of these fall through because I don't have the, the person to execute. So have a vision. So for example, you've identified a problem. You've seen in the engineering space, um, what's an example? Let's say solutions for solar. Yeah. So we have Kenya Power, like when I tried to apply for Kenya Power in my case, I was given a bid of 1.7 million because I had I was outside the radius of 600 by 100 meters. And no matter what I tried to plead, they would not listen. And you know, when you buy that transformer, it's not yours, it's there, yeah? So I decided to go solar. But now when I went solar and I asked on my timeline, uh, what, what, do, what are the pros and cons? Because I don't know much about solar. I'm telling you, it was a scene. You all went to different universities when you're giving me those submissions. So there was this one who talks about this thing, and other comes and says this way and this way and this way. So if I were an entrepreneur and I was following a Bankove and I was in engineering, I'm giving you an example of seeing uh, opportunities, I would say we have very many lay people because we have people saying, oh, I'm also interested, I'm also interested, I'm also interested. And I realized um, all these solutions are scattered. Of course, they are also biased depending on the marketing angle. But you don't have a platform where anyone who's taking solutions for solar can go. The, the basic one on one of solar. So if I'm, I also love um, IT solutions, then this is something that my company can offer. Just a simple website of solar, the do's and don'ts, because they kept on telling me green, off green, the other one is what? Retired, yes. And I'm like, what is this? What's the difference between a lithium battery and a what, a what battery? So those are, it's a service that you can clearly see if you're, maybe on that social media platform, that there's a problem. That is information, it's scattered, it's also piecemeal. And maybe there's something that you can offer because you're an expert. And just by creating a solution like that, you are able to not only inform people, but also uh, work with other partners towards supporting that kind of plan. So you get your revenue from partnerships, but you're giving information for that. So have a vision. The vision has to be sorting a problem. So you can't, and this is what I see a lot in the medical space, especially in engineering, because people divide, whether it's IT or whether it's mechanical or devices. People devise a, a, a solution, and then they look to see where the problem is. And most of the time, the engineers are outside healthcare space and are not consulted with healthcare space. For example, during COVID, we saw all manners of gadgets, all manners of gadgets. And the people do, they, they did a fantastic. We have a lot of technical brain there. But they did not understand the ecosystem of medicine. The ecosystem of medicine is highly regulated field. So you didn't even know that you need some sort of certification, international standards local standards, and then looking at the market, uh, who are the players, who are the people who will pay. So most people thought government would buy those things. Government does not need anybody to a private sector. 
And then Dabnet also has corruption. So you have procurement laws and whatnot. So we had fantastic ideas at the such at the universities and we also sat with them. So ensure that you see the problem and then develop a solution for it. Believe in yourself. So you went to school, you finished. Is there any student here? Someone who's still in uh, school? He's still in school, undergrad. Okay. But you qualified to go to that school. Yes. So one of the things that I see is a lot of uh, self sabotage as women. So you've come up with this fantastic product, or you've come up with this fantastic business, you've identified, you've marketed, you've built a platform, or you've built a Facebook or whatever. I'll refer to Facebook a lot because the others are not so good at it. Let's say LinkedIn profile. And then a comment comes there. And the comment is like, but this solution does not, compared to this competitor, it does not work properly. And you know, whatever that put is a fact, it's not that it's, uh, it is, it's not something to just, uh, in, you know, put you down, it's a fact. But because you've reached a hurdle, you start now second guessing yourself. And you realize maybe people don't want this thing. So you start now reducing that and, and you stop it. Or you get discouraged, you don't follow it up. So you need to have uh, to be at a place where you are so confident in yourself that when you stand up, how many of you have ever done elevator pitches? Okay, I'm not choose you be. Do you mind saying an elevator pitch about yourself? Do you have a business? Do you have a business? Okay, who has a business? And um, can test an elevator pitch in. Okay, try. What's your name? Yes, Melbourne. For a living and a made house for a living. For a living and a made house for a living. Did you get that? That was so shocked that she's uh, she's she's got she's uh okay, she's kind of a thing. So elevator pitch is when you have three minutes with me being the president, and I want to be the president, being the president in an elevator. You have only three minutes. You're you trying to get me. Now you have your chance. Okay. And you say, thank you for a living and doing that for a So if that's the first presentation, and then no, just yeah. I keep for a living and I mean that's for a living. Many of them are doing it as a thing for them and I transform them to their Wow, did you hear that? Yeah. So she killed for a living and she meant her for a living. The first thing that hits you is that she killed. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's a very catchy press. That talent and it will stay with someone. That track line will stay with someone. So learn to, to work on your elevator pitches. Learn to know your tagline. Learn to know what the so what. Why should I be interested in your business? That so what. Don't go saying my competitor does not, my competitor does not, my comp all I hear is your competitor. So do not market yourself using your competitor. Talk about yourself. Talk about the solution you're providing and talk about why I need to get that solution. So believe in yourself. Be consistent. So if you are in the engineering space and you need to be exposed to fora, you know, you need to network. You have to invest time. You have to invest resources. You have to invest resources in marketing. Sometimes I am led to some of your pages for those who have approached me to market for them. And the last time they posted was 2019. And it was a forward actually. It wasn't even an original article. It was a forward of, of, of uh, 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 a Bible verse. We post a lot of Bible verses of philosophical statements. So look at your, your strategy, your marketing strategy. Have a strategy if you don't have. 
and then be consistent about how you do it. Stay strong. As I said, um, the ecosystem is designed to make you think. So you have to learn to swim upstream. Entrepreneurship is not for the faint-hearted. If you're faint-hearted, please stay with employment and excel in employment. But yeah, we are not all meant to be entrepreneurs. And employment is, I told you, I am in full-time employment. Employment is also good, yeah? In fact, most of the time you'll be having conflict of interest when you do work. Um, don't distract from society. So, as I said, you know, there's a wave that has come on. The in thing right now is, especially women and in the beauty sector, the in thing right now is sister lots, yeah? For those in the natural hair business. A year ago, we were all, or three years ago, we were all afros. Another year, we were all weaves. Another year, we are. So, if you sweep, if you go with the society, you'll get distracted because you need to have a goal. But you can only have a goal if you are sorting a problem. If it's no longer a problem because it has been sorted, then now identify another problem, sort out. So it's possible for you to change your goal, but based on the solution. What are some of the challenges that we face? I think the, the one that is very critical for me, oops, I don't know. One is a dependent culture. So we want to have crutches with us. You want, to, you want to be with someone else there. In fact, this was a big problem for me in terms of, I couldn't just form a company by myself. I had to look for someone else. I went to Uganda to register this company. Then you realize you're the only one carrying the vision. We were in they're just there. In fact, they're dead weight most of the time. So we have a dependent culture. We want to see who else has done it, or where else can I do it, uh, what are people doing. You need to learn to be proud to stand alone. Yeah? The other thing is, of course, finance. And finance is a problem not just for women and men. Of course, for women, it's much, much more because you, we work on almost double, double the time to prove about our business. Limited mobility. Limited mobility here, I mean, you have a solution, the solar solution, it's supposed to take you. There's a client in Turkana, in Kakuma. How many of you know where Kakuma is? How do you access Kakuma? Before the roads were done, before the, aero, the <laughs> flights. Okay, now we have flights. Maybe at the, now you, you, you want, your employer may have taken you there. How many have gone to Kakuma by themselves, not through by their business? If not Kakuma, we forgot. If not, we forgot Shompole. I once brought to Shompole with my kids and someone else. Until the network says, welcome to Tanzania. Even the Maasai there speak Tanzanian, so it, but Shompole is actually in Kenya. But now when you hear, oh, the client is in Shompole, women, women, I'm talking to you, senior. We have this thing of, eh, how will I get there? Eh, and we may have water for me to shower. But then each of them, if I don't shower on Sundays, I'm saving the climate from uh, climate change. So you have to be had. I think a mechanical, or rather, your engineering course gives you that grit. But as women, you have to learn to live without certain comfort. Oh, I can't go, I can't sleep outside the house without my children. Oh, I've never slept without, I'm away from my children. So we have that excuse. Oh, uh, I can't go, my periods are about to come. How will I change? Is it not a real thing? These are things. They are real things for mobility. So you have to overcome that mobility. If a client says, I am here, let me tell you, climb walls, jump over fences, do whatever it can, you, can, you can do. Overcome those feminine blocks that sometimes we put for ourselves to move. The other one is Stiff competition. Stiff competition from people. So again, as I said, you have to be to have grit. Sensitivity, women. That's a some of us. We are very sensitive to words. So learn yourself. I had to learn my personality. There's a personality test I usually recommend. It's called Myers Briggs. M Y E R S and then B I R double G Myers Briggs. 
last night it has. It's free. Ten minutes you have three things. It's free. It's ten minutes. You're done. You get your results. I used to wonder why am I so different? Why do I why do I have less mistakes? Why do I feel like I have to save the world? Uh, why do I have to? Why do people come to me for problems and ask me for solutions? Until I did that test and I realized I am a campaigner. And that campaigners, we live to save the world. And we thrive when we have brought in change. That type of social change is more important than medicine. But I realized also, campaigners can suffer burnout, serious burnout. So I've learned to put boundaries for myself. I've learned to say, I cannot solve the political solution right now. I cannot solve the doctor's issue of 4,000 doctors who are unemployed because I've done my part. I've done my part previously. I cannot solve the issue of women being beaten because I'm a passionate feminist here. Yeah? So GBV, I get those inboxes. I cannot solve the issue of a child with a disability woman who has not gone to school. I cannot solve. So I have learned to say, for this year, I want to concentrate on this space and only to the level where I can. Because if left alone, I'm busy solving other people's problems and I forget to do my thing. So we can learn your, your, your strengths and your blind spots. I don't say weaknesses, I call them blind spots. Because once you learn that, then you're able to know what kind of a leader you are, what kind of a business you need to run, what your passion is. Because if you're someone who's not getting and, and an extrovert who can stand in front of people, then it's very hard for you to run a business that, that talks about public speaking. Yeah? So identify your sensitive thing. Lack of information. And this is a cross board, not just men and women. But we don't seek information. We don't read enough. If you compare it to, uh, let's say, the Asian community, Asia means the Asian continent, not white, the Asian continent. Those guys are in the business of getting information and using that information to, to turn into their own good. So we have that. But we have opportunities. I think we've talked about opportunities, but this forum by itself is an opportunity to network, to get to know what's happening, to get to be built, to get to share your, your issues. Uh, we have opportunities from government. And this is a big issue. And forgive me for the India bits that I could modify that slide. Government has Women Enterprise Fund. How many of us have ever, if you're 30, below 35? No, that, that's for you. How many of us have ever looked for it? Women Enterprise Fund. Have you applied for it? Well, yes. So at least she has the information, but again, she went with the Chama thing. Do you know the government has a budget for women in entrepreneurship? How many women are accessing it? Middle class. I'm talking about middle class, upper class. We think that fund is for mama. But guess what? You go and apply, you get fund. Of course, you'll start with little money, they'll give you 50,000, but that's 50,000 you didn't have. See you. The next time you pay it, they take it a bit higher, they take it a bit higher. So women, look at this opportunity, educate yourself. And I love going for these trade fairs. You know, as show used to be just for students when we're young. But let me tell you, the amount of information that is with government and that they share in those forums, you'll be amazed. They won't come looking for you if there is a chapter forum. They won't even put it there. Websites are not as updated as you want to. So you have to look for this forum. When you hear there's a trade fair, the other day the president was opening European business, European and Kenya business forum, just like two weeks ago. Did we get to hear about that? Okay. So you cannot get to hear about that if you're not a member of an association. Like us guys, they sent it through PEPSA, sit on the PEPSA board, Kenya Private Sector Alliance. But even within the FEPSA board, there are those committees. There's a, there's a sector board on, on, on this environment of the engineering space. So if you're not a member of those things, you don't get to know those information. And then you need to invest. Some of them have charges because those people, are, they're paid to come. 
But when you invest in yourself, and I remember sending someone and they said they're not available, but you just go and look for climate. Climate change is an in thing right now. Climate change conversation. That lady went, she was a, she's like a two years post internship as a doctor, and she told me this the amount of information that's there. And these are guys who have opportunities for Kenyan businesses, but we don't tap into them. So next time you see agricultural squeeze in Atra, it's no longer SK, it's called what? It's not an agricultural thing, it's now a trend thing. Yeah? Please go. Please go and visit the government. I'm giving you just that one assignment for this year. Visit the government stores. You'll be amazed how much information, how many opportunities are there for women, but we don't tap into them. And if you're a woman who's younger than 35, you have a good part also. So let, let money not be an issue. Then opportunities created through training programs. Training programs like this one, training programs that are online. Kisera has many free resources. I don't know whether for you guys you have um, material in such free resources. So give yourself a personal development objective and say every quarter I'm going to take a two hour course online. And you've identified which areas you want to be. Maybe you're in the solar space and you want to look at the chemical or water engineering space. You just want, you don't want to be an expert, but you want to know what's happening there. Please plug into that. And then consortia like some of this, like be the engineer one. So how do we build? This is my last slide. An ecosystem. So you might not be the entrepreneur, but you have the capacity to support female entrepreneurs. Whether you're a leader in your organization, whether you're a CEO of your organization, in those spaces, as you go up, please go with one more lady. Hold one lady's hand so that you are creating spaces. So the more you, you're building up a pyramid, the more women being brought up. So number one, celebrating women entrepreneurs. So how about in the engineering space, I don't know if you have one big association or the associations are divided into your disciplines. Plug into your association, sit, volunteer for those things. That's part of networking and building a social capital. It doesn't have money, it will cost you time, it will cost you resources, but it will build your network. It also builds your CV. It also builds your experience. You learn how boards are managed. If you have a company, you better be aiming to have a board for that company. So if you don't know how boards are even constituted, you never know unless you participate in that. And so have one, it suggests to the uh, uh, engineering space, but let's have one event. And I'm telling you, you get backwards for this. Because women in STEM is a hot topic right now. So think about how do you celebrate women. And it doesn't have to be an event. It will be every quarter you have an online thing. And you say, you know what? Today we are highlighting engineer so-and-so who is based in, I don't know where, Marrakech, doing this and that. That alone is a start celebrating women. And women start appreciating themselves. Female-centric networking groups. So as I say, if you don't have a female-centric one, please create. Accelerators. You cannot know that they're accelerators unless you plug into those private sector spaces. For example, in CAPSA, we have accelerators. And they're fully funded by the, especially the development partners. You'll not get to know that if you're not plug into the networking spaces. And don't just go there as a participant, offer yourself for leadership. I remember joining Kenya Medical Association at internship. At internship, I joined and I said I want to sit in the council. I'm telling you, I used to be told to serve tea a lot. But I started building my, I started learning from my seniors. They were men, yes. They would meet in bars. Can you imagine? And I would go and say, you know what? I want to learn. I'm going there with the purpose. I wasn't drinking at that time. But I went, I went, I went kicking and screaming, but I went. And once they started now accepting me, because they will take time to accept you. But I'm telling you, bring your chair. Bring your chair to those tables, they will not invite you. So open those spaces because you're opening for others. Nowadays, the last time, the two presidents ago, we had our first female uh, medical doctor as a president of the association. And she came because some of us had been. So once you open those spaces, 
you get to learn. By the way, our male colleagues have loads of information, and very many of them are good at it. So learn from them. It doesn't take it doesn't take anything from you to learn from your seniors or even from your juniors. So get into those spaces. Let's create a safe space. So within this human centric uh, environment, how can we create safe spaces for women? How can we ensure there is a time I was probably speaking to engine to architect uh oh, no. there's a female architect and she told me this when I go to a construction site, I found that there were no toilets. Because men go and stand somewhere and pee. So she realized it's like they had never thought that they need a toilet. Because as a man, what you don't need. So you just stand the other way around and pee. Yeah, then they don't call them go maybe to our neighbors. But she started now getting them to think about the uniqueness. You also celebrate your femininity as a woman. But these are spaces that you know other people don't think about maternity leave, uh, period leave. Now this is even menopause. There are such spaces for women going through menopause in, in companies. I think on, I read the other day Ogilvy was the first UK company to have a a safe time for women going through menopause in the workplace. So these safe spaces help. And then commitment. You cannot do this without being committed. It will take it has taken your time to come here on Saturday. You could be doing something else, but you've committed yourself. So set aside time for yourself and have fun while at it. So I usually tell people at the end of our events as doctors, we always had a social. Because this, this life is hard enough as it is. So how about mixing fun and learning to this? Yeah, so I think, um, I hope I've challenged you to think about entrepreneurship. I'm not an expert, but I know I'm not living off, living badly off, because my entrepreneurship journey has been failing forward, failing forward. You know, you've, when you fall forward, you've moved, your head has moved two steps. If you're totally short, like me, you've moved uh, <laughs> five feet. Five feet three from where it was. So you're down, but when you stand up, you'll be standing up in front. Isn't it? So failure is part of life. Just know that you need to pay forward. Don't give up. And sometimes if things have changed, nothing is wrong with saying, I'm taking a pause, I'm reevaluating, I'm coming back bigger and better. A service of Yeah, thanks for that question. So, on my end, uh, because I'm very active on social media, most of my entrepreneurship are driven a lot on the social media space. So, if you put a time on how much time you spend on social media, you'll be amazed. I put for myself two hours a day. By 10 o'clock, usually I'm from those two hours. And it takes a lot of discipline for me to say I need to shut down. So what I do is um, the time that I'm taking breaks in between writing a proposal, in between visiting someone, you've gone to a government office, of course, those people have kept you waiting on, on, on social media. So I use my social media to make money. Um, the other thing is the, using the time in the evenings and the time in the weekends. So for example, the Domestic Worker Bureau, I get to go to that uh, office on Saturday. I also work smart, not hard. So I hire my weakness in my businesses. So for example, I'm a strategy person. I am a big picture person, but I, I was told by my mentor, and please have mentors, they're very important. I was told by my mentor, you, you know how to take off a plane to exceedingly high heights, you don't know how to land it. It was a very painful realization. You know, you think you're, 
So she told me, hire your weakness, and your weakness is in manic things. So I look for for my employees, I make them take that personality test. Because if they're both campaigners, we will all, the whole time, we will spend the time imagining, dreaming, catching, fixing, whatnot, and not doing the hard work. So I employ my weakness, and I make sure that they are sisters. I try. I was a lot. I had to get into uh, business uh, training courses, like she business account, which is in APSA, that helped me now start putting it. And the good thing is when you're employed, all these policies, in fact, that was a funny thing, because I took a one year to do employment, I meant to do business. And you know, when I was employed, I used to say, this is a child with all these policies, you have to take that you rent it, uh, compliance, procurement, you have to bring three quotations. They used to really bother me, because me, I'm there, I want to, let's, let's provide services in this facility, let's move. But then they'll say, you know what, has this budget been approved, was it part of your plan, you don't know. Now I had to do those policies for my own organization. And I realized the experience I came with from my employment, I, I needed to put it into, into the business. It was a very painful realization, but slowly by slowly, I'm able to be here without thinking about the business. Because I know I have given them the strategy and the executing. So I guess there's a fire that's happening there. They don't also bother me a lot. Because also I don't like my communication style. Don't bring for me, she has come to me with that solution as you're bringing in the problems. So it takes a while, sometimes you're a one woman show, and just see, just see tools that can make you work smarter, and please give your employer, I excel in my work. And I think that's why the very few would really want to tell me that uh, you're also running this and that. It's because I give my employer the best of me. And when you do it, then no one bothers you. At least you Employers who are more open minded, like some, some of us work with employers who are like, have you delivered this? How you deliver it is your, is your prerogative. So, also, exam. You cannot not be examining at work and you're busy running businesses. So, be, be uh, deliberate about how you, what you do and how you deliver things all around them. Our 20 minutes break. This is 15 seconds because we are behind time. And as we go for break, as we come back, we're going to be having our conversation with the most of us in the So we're going to be having after the break. And then the canteen is on the first floor. There is water at the back. Also, just to remind you that we need to talk. You know, as we go for our break, please let us take photos, let us put captions, and also something that you planned. I know that when Dr. Amakondo was standing there, there's something that you've taken from her, like they can take out. So you can, tap, you can put it on Twitter, that is, uh, you can tag women in STEM, diversity in STEM, but also put women, that is hashtag, women in STEM leadership. And looking at Twitter, we are having B the engineer, that is new key. B double B double E the engineer. You can also tag Thai Thai, that is T I E underscore event underscore baby. Also please tag David and Shadi. There's one more that will be added after the tea break. And then on Facebook there is B the engineer is David and Shadi the Millennial environmental environment, I'm trying to say that word today, I don't know why. And then also on LinkedIn, the B engineer, then also Thai, that is T I D event, David and Shafi. And one more that I've forgotten on Twitter, T M A 254. You can see that you're writing, but the ones that you've gotten for now, tag them. After the break, they're going to be posted on the projector. Thank you so much and do enjoy your tea break.